Hey friends, Lee Brown here, and to tell you the truth, I'm kind of taken with the suggestion that my cooking show be called My Kitchen, My Room. Look, this, the stove just spoke and agreed with me. And my reputation may never recover from quarantine time during coronavirus, because apparently y'all don't think I'm a raging drunk because I drink a cocktail with dinner. So sue me, my kitchen, my rules, right? So tonight we're gonna have some Basil Hayden's, which is my favorite bourbon, and we're just gonna have it on the rocks. Sometimes I have it neat, and sometimes I put a little in my hot tea just because, you know, it soothes your throat. And that way, if I'm out coughing, people won't run screaming from me and assume that I have the coronavirus. So cheers, and I am using my great-grandmother's glassware. But I don't reckon she drank, because I heard a story that my great-grandmother and my great-grandfather used to play instruments. They played the alto harp and the fiddle, and apparently there was some fight with some drunks, and my great-granddaddy broke his fiddle over the head of the other drunk, and nobody ever played an instrument or drank again. Anyway, the story's kind of complicated. My cousin Ann is probably going to pipe up with the details because she is good at that. But anyway, tonight our recipe is fairly simple. My son came up to me this afternoon and said, Mama, now his favorite thing that I make is mashed potatoes. And it's not even Thanksgiving. It's no longer Easter, but I had some potatoes in the cupboard. So y'all, we're gonna make some mashed potatoes tonight. And since it is my kitchen, my rules, don't be judging for the number of calories that are in what I'm fixing to make tonight. And if you want to know about these blue jeans that I wear, and look, they're yoga pants. They're made by Ink and Burn, and they have these good pockets here that will hold your cell phone. And if you want the discount, you should let me know because those people at Ink and Burn made me an ambassador. I was so pleased. It's like the joy of my life because that's the only company I really was interested in because I love their running clothes. And frankly, things like my mashed potatoes are why I run. So we are going to peel our potatoes here this is a very simple recipe. The ingredients that you need to gather up would be a container of sour cream. So if you want to cut a calorie, get the light sour cream. <laughs> I don't think that cuts and everything, but all right, it makes us feel better, and I guess that's half the battle. And then you also need to have on hand some butter. Tonight we have Trader Joe's. Now I normally have Land Lake, but because of coronavirus, you people hoard some interesting things. I was at Lowe's Foods, and they were out of Land O'Lakes butter. And there's certain things I buy store brand of, but I just walked on past the Lowe's food brand butter. I imagine it's fine. I get most of their store brand things. But I had to go to Trader Joe's, and there was no line around the corner today, and I got some Trader Joe's butter. Now, you'll notice they're salted and unsalted, and I don't reckon it makes a difference in mashed potatoes, frankly, the more salt, the better, as far as I'm concerned. That's your three ingredients so far, potatoes, butter, and sour cream. And you're gonna need some kosher salt and you're gonna need some pepper. So what I have over here working on the stove is some boiled in a pot of water. And I have put some kosher salt in it already because if y'all didn't know, it makes everything better when you salt your water first. Now, because I'm gonna do some more prep work here and I really don't have enough to say for y'all to listen to me ramble while I peel potatoes, because it's not the most glamorous job in the world. I will remind you though, if you have a disposal in your kitchen, please don't put potato peels down your disposal. They are bad for it. You need to put them outside in your composter. And by the way, when your realtor comes to your house to sell it, <clears throat> you should call me if you're in Charlotte. Just know that if you have a compost bin outside, uh, it probably had ought not to be stinking and covered up in flies and gnats when we get your house on the market. So we'll discuss timing. So now I'm going to pause for a commercial break, even though nobody pays me commercials. And I'll splice it back up here in just one second. Okay, friends. So here's the magic for your mashed potatoes. So you see, they are steaming hot. I drained the water off and they're relatively soft. I can cut it with that wooden spoon. And now we're gonna take a stick of butter. Yes, a whole stick of butter for half a bag of potatoes. And the amount of butter that you put in, frankly, depends on how much cholesterol you would like to have because butter's amazing, it's good for you, it's got dairy, and dairy is for bone density. And those of y'all that are medium age like me, you need to be thinking about your bone density, which means you need to eat more butter. And I don't mean some sad little knockoff margarine oleo, can't believe it's not butter, because I can tell you, I can believe it's not butter, it ain't butter. 
So don't be trying to pass those things off. Now what I have done is I have shoved all my hot potatoes on top of the butter to make it melt. Now while I'm doing that, we're gonna put some pepper in. And as y'all know, I'm not a measure or I'm a feel it. And so we're gonna put enough pepper in there to where I can look at it. And we might have to add a little back. So as you're putting in your salt and pepper, anytime you see a recipe that says to taste, it depends on who's tasting it, frankly, that gets to decide. So that's not gonna be enough salt. I would imagine in the regular world, this is probably two tablespoons of salt or two tea, that's probably two teaspoons, tablespoon maybe, I don't know. But it's a good amount. I like kosher because I think it's better and I don't know why. So now I'm gonna check my butter and see how it did while the salt and pepper were going in. Oh, it's getting nice and liquidy. So we're gonna stir it about and get a new area of hot potatoes on top of it. If you ever wondered about that game hot potato, I frankly think it had everything to do with making mashed potatoes and what you're going to use your hot potatoes for. And while I'm waiting on that, I should probably cut the stove off. Look, forgot to cut the stove off. Very important step in cooking. So, as soon as this thing melts, it's getting right close now. I know y'all are excited because you're looking at your potatoes at home and you're thinking, Lee Brown, this has got to be better than the instant stuff in a box. And I will tell you, I used to eat that in college. My girlfriend, Julia, and I, we used to have what we call Granny Friday night. And for us, Granny Friday night was when I didn't have to work at the restaurant and she was not hanging out with the sorority friends and her boyfriend would be in and out of the apartment. But we would eat things like green beans and mashed potatoes. And I made a killer seven layer dip. And we would just sit around in our pajamas under a blanket and watch the television and we didn't have cable all the time because we were a little bit broke being college girls and frankly i think that's what the young people are missing out on they're not having enough roommates in life roommates are a gift from the lord and i don't know what i would do without julia so high five julia cheers to granny friday night all right now that is melted nice and good so what we're going to do now is we're gonna add sour cream. Now, how much are we gonna add? Well, this is a 16 ounce container, so we're gonna squeeze in about half of it. See, that's technically, we call that squoze. I squoze in about half, well, not quite half. Let's get more in there. Y'all, if you ever wanted to know what makes a creamy mashed potato, look, it's sour cream and milk. Do not put milk in, you know, butter. You put milk in there, it's just gonna make them soupy. And that, frankly, is just a travesty. Now, I know I have one of those little masher tools, but nothing work as good as your hand mixer. So we're gonna run the hand mixer just right in the bowl we cooked them in. Look, we are preserving our dish time and I've got it at a medium high speed. And I'm just gonna run it around until it's mixed up good. I don't try to get rid of all the lumps. Now some of y'all might be anti-lump people. I believe in lumps. I'm a lump fan. I say lump 2020 and beyond and before and I'm going to make it until it's nice and mixed and then we're going to do the very important job of any cook to taste it. it needs more pepper and I'm pretty sure that my taste tester will be in the kitchen in just a minute because just like cats and dogs know when you're feeding them my son knows when the mashed potatoes are coming off the stove and the mixer is going so he will be here to get me the heads up. Oh, I think that's enough pepper because now I can see it. See, that's the key to pepper. If you can't see it, you did not put enough in, but you probably shouldn't be able to see your salt. That's a bit much. Don't go that far. And well, I know y'all are sad now to be watching this on video and not be at my house. If you come over though, we might find you a plate of leftovers to carry with you because that's what it's going to look like. See, good, nice whipped potatoes. And I hope you'll enjoy them and tell me all about it. And then you're gonna tell me how you added cheese and parsley and paprika. And I will just get my glass of basil Hayden and so. All right then, change it up however you want to. Make a video and tell me and maybe I'll look at it and we'll all be friends. Until then, I'll see you next time.